Minions Blackbeard Exchange. And I got a logo for you here. I'm going to toss it up here real quick. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day out here in Florida. We are simply visiting my family. This is not a usual thing. I'm not in any way wealthy enough where I'm a traveling person. This is just uh, getting away to see family, um, having a wonderful time while I'm out here. But one of the things that's happening right now um, with trading and things like that, right now uh, the elections have are in process. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, an election was done mostly in a day, and you knew who you are. You knew who the next person was who was going to be president. Now, where are we at? We have no idea when the counts are going to be done. And right now, Trump isn't leading as of um, Thursday uh, Thursday afternoon so far. Uh, but uh, what have I seen in the markets? Well, I'm learning that my experience with the markets. Let me turn this down slightly here. Um, I'm learning that my experience with the markets is very, very limited, and when I thought that the markets are going down, they're going up, and why are they going up with the election? That's really catching me off guard. With the uncertainty of what is to come, why is it kicking off and doing so well when it comes to, I think we're on three-day highs of, of trading and of, um, of the markets? I have no idea. Another thing to note... Um, as it seems like the Dow reads, uh, Dow, S&P 500, and all that stuff read throughout the day. So you're not waiting till open to find out how all that stuff is doing. Apparently, you can check some of those numbers before the market opens. The, for those of you who know that, good for you. For those of us who don't, that's um, new information. Uh, one thing uh, that my mom showed me is uh, Fox Business. Um, and uh, they have a live stream that you can watch. Uh, you don't have to pay for it. And at the same time, they even have uh, Dow and all those numbers right on the side of their website. So if you're curious how the Dow is looking in the moment, you can go and check it out even, I think, as far as I can tell, even before and after market. I've done a couple trades, very small trades, and uh, so far all is very well uh, in, in that realm of things, uh, just a couple little trades, you know, I'll make 12 cents here, 10 cents there. Uh, just, you know, little, little greens, little greens, that's all it is, and, uh, and that's the point. If I can walk away with little greens every day, I will continue to learn, and those little greens will grow a little bit at a time, and that's just another dollar to trade. I also pulled some funds out because I made a rather large purchase. My family does something called Brother, Son, Sister's Daughter's Day, and uh, it's basically in replacement of Halloween, something that we did as a kid, and apparently the tradition has stayed with us even as I am 33, 34 years old now, which is pretty cute. Um and uh, so I uh, got a little bit of cash from my folks as a, just a nice, wonderful gift that, that, that they do once a year. Totally ca catches me off guard because I forget all about it because I'm an adult now. I don't think about Brother, Son, Sister's Daughter's Day that we've created in replacement of Halloween. And um, I decided to buy something rather big and stupid for myself. Bought myself the Oculus Quest 2, and I'm loving it. Uh, for those of you who are concerned about Facebook privacy issues, I'm sorry, they've been stealing our identities and stealing all of our data forever. So there's no, in my opinion, there's not really much in addition to it that's going to make much of a difference. They can still track us completely, that we still have given up. Any, any privacy that we have because we have phones like we do right here, whatever the case is. But I've been really enjoying that Oculus Quest 2. And something I found is there's called something called Immersed VR. You can get it for free or you can pay monthly for it. If you pay monthly, it's like $15. There is a point that I'm getting to. This does have to do with Blackbeard Exchange where you can have up to, I want to say, five screens. And these five screens... In immersed VR, you can be in this room with five screens. Imagine the stocks that you can track with this app. Uh, and, and so I've been trying it out. I've been messing with it, and I really like it, except for the weight of the goggles on your face. Um, it's really, really cool. The screens look really, really clear. Uh, literally, I could trade in VR. And so it's something I'm messing with just because... Uh, you only need a powerful laptop to run it. I have a really nice laptop that I actually got while I was here. That's something I got to talk about in an upcoming podcast. Uh, but um, and I got that in a really weird circumstance, which is amazing. Uh, but the uh, the the VR stuff is so cool because I can take a laptop and I can link to it through Wi-Fi and only have about a 7 millisecond delay. That's not going to bug you when it comes to the markets. That 7 milliseconds is not going to mess up um, trading, uh, tr you know, trades, clicking through trades. And instead of having one screen directly in front of me, I could have four or five uh, really big screens. And just as I turn my head, I can see all of my stocks and things. It's really, really cool. Uh, yeah, there, I found a little couple gimmicks here and there, but the theory is there. And it's something that I've wondered about for a long time when it came to 
VR? Can I use VR in a in a money making way? Well, if I could trade, and if I could have five screens in, uh, in in VR instead of one screen directly in front of me on my computer, how cool is that? And you run everything from your computer. It's really really nifty. So um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get video and show you guys that. I sh I should try to see if maybe I can record my VR screen and kind of demonstrate that. If you're curious about that, leave me a comment down below and we'll see what we can do on that. Uh, I haven't quite learned about how to capture VR, um, how to capture VR um, screen capture, if you will, just yet. But it it'll be a work in progress. So. Uh, when it came, to, it comes down to it. I've been messing with a couple trades. Um, I traded KXIN today. Uh, traded, um, I traded a couple small stocks. But one thing that I'm thinking I'm going to try and do because I pulled some money out of those out of my brokerages to pay for the remainder of that Oculus Quest Two. Um, I'm going to probably try and trade some larger priced stocks. So instead of doing two dollars to five dollars, I might move it up from. Eight dollars to ten dollars, or eight dollars to twenty dollars, somewhere around there. And the reason why I'm thinking is because it seems like the volatility, which is so important, seems slightly smoother at the higher price ranges. I don't know if that's something I've heard from other people who trade. They're like, I was wrong about penny stocks, and they're overly volatile. You can't, you can't see the patterns and things. I'm not sure how true or not true that is. Your opinion would be greatly appreciated. But uh, to raise my Instead of trading um, 10 stocks at $2 a stock, uh, which would, let's call that 20 bucks, um, why not trade one stock at 20 bucks um, and see how that moves in comparison? Uh, because it would seem that penny stocks move at a much lower rate of speed than larger stocks. So larger stocks at like $20 look like they move from $20.50 to $20 and uh, 99 cents uh, within a very, very short period of time where smaller stocks at $2 and let's call it $2 even will move to $2.10 um, in that same amount of time. So the movement is so much less in those penny stocks where maybe I'll have more um, more luck, more movement through the stocks at the higher rates. I don't know. It's, it's a theory that's going through my head, not with a lot of science behind it, just a theory at this moment in time. Um, so I might try that for a little bit. Uh, right now, I'm still running three brokerages, um, running Fidelity. Right now, I have stocks in Ford and in uh, my favorite stock, SPI. Um, SPI was the big trader that, that made that jump from $4 to $40 a long time ago, and that was a beautiful day. Um, traded that and walked away with about three 400 in profits. That was an amazing day. Um, so I got stuff in both of those. They're both way down. Um, I do not have stops on them. I just want to feel the pain of those so I see what it's like to just watch my money fall away. And I did that on purpose. Um, and I do, I do hope to see them come back up at some point in time. The one thing I've been basing a lot of my reasons on my longs on, which I don't, I only have like three longs. The only reason I'm trying them is I want to see what happens through the elections. Okay, is it Biden? Is it Trump? What's going to happen with those stocks? Uh, after those are done, I might jump out um, and and just and just take my losses. And I'm expecting to take rather large losses. But it would be very interesting to see um, if if uh, one of those comes in and then suddenly those stocks seem to jump for one reason or another because they get a contract with. Uh, get a contract with the presidential elections in some way, shape, and form or another, whether it be military or something like that. I, I, I find it. I would find it very interesting to see what would happen to those stocks. And I'm sitting on them because SBI has had a history of spiking in the past. Not major spikes like the four to forty dollar, but it's had it's had some spikes. So I keep an eye on that every morning. And then uh, Ford. Um, the Ford, I unfortunately, I, I don't see that coming back nearly as well. I hope it does. I hope maybe something good will happen and that'll jump them back up. I bought it at $9. I think it's sitting around $7 right now. Um, I didn't buy a lot of shares, but um, I bought enough where I'm feeling the bruise ever so slightly. Um, I agree with everyone, and I've been following very carefully the rule that uh, it, you don't bet, don't buy enough stocks that you'll start sweating over. Um, I don't, I'm not sweating over any of this. I'm not losing out a lot of money. Um, uh, but if I win, I usually gain uh, a little bit of money on these longs where my shorts, um, no, I'm, I'm making pennies, uh, cents and pennies uh, as I continue to learn. Um, and, and like I say, at a, at a certain point in time, as I can move more money into there instead of moving money out and buying quests and things like that, um, 
in time, I can see a benefit moving ahead. So getting there little bit by little bit, but there's still some time ahead when it comes to learning how to do the stock stuff properly. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope that you guys don't mind a little little longer chat right there as we uh, as we pirate the markets and learn about how to do all this stuff. So I'll see you all next time right here on the Blackbeard Exchange. Peace.